Hello, my name is Deep Saini. I'm President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University. Welcome to the Deep Dive. As you know, we had to suspend the deep dive interviews when COVID-19 arrived and we could not any longer do face-to-face -face interviews. Now we are going to resume this series through Zoom interviews. And the first of these uh, interviews in this series today is with Professor Jennifer Llewellyn, who is a professor in the Schulich School of uh, Law here at Dalhousie University. She is also the director of newly established Restorative Research, Innovation, and Education Lab here at Dalhousie. Our other guest is Dr. Holly Northam, who is head of the discipline of nursing at the University of Canberra in Australia. Both of them are long-term collaborators and very much part of the restorative justice movement around the world. Hello, Jennifer and Holly. Um, let me first start by saying welcome to Deep Dive. Uh, thank you for joining us. It is such a pleasure to see two leading institutions from Canada and Australia join together to uh, talk about uh, our restorative research innovation education lab that opened at Dalhousie University in June. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to be watching this. And as they watch, I know that the first question that will come to your, their minds is what is restorative justice? So let me begin by asking each one of you to describe to us what is restorative justice. Jennifer, let's start with you. Sure, thanks, Deep. Restorative justice is really a way of thinking about justice that isn't simply focused on laws and rules, but really on just relations between people, groups, communities, even nations. And, and this way of thinking about justice then makes a difference to how we try to do justice. It brings a new lens to the laws, the policies, the practices that seek justice in our systems and institutions and communities. So it offers an approach to justice, really, that's inclusive, participatory, collaborative, and comprehensive. So it pays careful attention to root causes and to circumstances so that we can address them to really secure justice. Thank you. Now, that, that certainly sheds light uh, for me on what restorative justice is. Holly, would you like to add something to that? Thank you very much, Deep. And, and Jennifer obviously has given a, a, an excellent description of restorative justice. I'd like to add that from my perspective, it's, it's about um, a context of those relationships, of those just relationships. It's about thinking for the future um, learning from the past, it's about how do we do our relationships better so that we acknowledge when there's harm, but we make it, we, we seek a way of everybody being part of the solution and taking it forward. Okay. I like that idea of everybody being part of the solution. Um, so, you know, I think that's a, that's a good way, good time to, uh, for me to ask, you know, why, why is uh, restorative justice and setting up of this lab so important, particularly at this time. Jennifer. No, we're facing unprecedented calls right now for a new vision of justice from defund police to abolition or decarceration to reforms to our courts and justice system that are really demanding that we confront the ways in which our current system and institutions and our approach to justice are failing, are failing to support and secure justice and just relations. And we need sort of fundamental justice transformation if we're going to uproot systemic racism against black and, and indigenous peoples, if we're gonna to respond to the intersecting inequalities of gender, sexual identity, poverty, mental health, all of which have been so profoundly revealed during this pandemic. We need new ways of thinking about and then also doing justice that can work to shift these unequal patterns of relationship. Restorative justice offers us both that vision, that sort of transformed vision of restorative of justice, um, and it can really help us support the work that's required of all of us together to achieve it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, thank you. And Holly, you come at it from the health perspective. And so, you know, would you like to perhaps tell mm -hmm. us a bit more about the subject from, from your perspective? Thank you, Deep. Uh, very much so, and as Jennifer just said, it is very contextually relevant at the moment with the impact of COVID on so many people, those 
just relationships and those fair relationships are completely being shattered at the moment in the aged care sector. We see families that are separated. They can't understand why they, they, they can't have access to their loved ones. We see um, situations in nursing care homes, for instance, where staff are not attending to the, the care of, of people and, and the implications are horrendous. We see it in um, First Nations groups who are at, at, um, particularly at risk in certain circumstances for the impact of COVID. So those vulnerabilities start to really play out in this current environment. And from a healthcare perspective, what restorative justice and restorative practices do is it helps us to put in a clear shining light that here is a vulnerability, here is a, a, a harm that is occurring and it, it reminds us that this is a way we can manage the situation. We can look forward to, to bringing those relationships into a more just situation. Mm, thank you, Holly. Jennifer, um, you know, opening of your uh, restorative research, innovation and education lab here at Dalhousie was a big event. It, uh, it, it, it was widely covered in the media and, and there was a lot of excitement and it is the first of its kind in the world. Would you tell us something about this lab and, and of course the benefaction from the Sobe family that, that helped create the lab and how, um, it, how you view this as uh, the potential uh, move to transform the justice system in, in Canada and beyond. Yeah, we've been very fortunate to attract uh, support to the new Restorative Research Innovation and Education Lab. Uh, it is this incredible opportunity, really, to bring the principles of a restorative approach to life through a, a place and a space that, that right now is both physical and, of course, virtual, that will support those uh, systems and communities, both here in Canada and really around, around the world, that are seeking to transform justice. So it's really a, a social innovation or sort of change lab. It's intended to bring, you know, do the best that universities can do, bring people and ideas together to support real time uh, change. And so Dalhousie and the Schulich School of Law are hosting this lab. And it's an incredible partnership among government and communities, leading researchers and practitioners here and around the world. We've been very fortunate to attract uh, the support of the Donald R. Sobe Foundation uh, for a chair that will uh, secure the leadership for the lab. And we're opening up uh, this place and space and we hope that when it's, uh, when it's safe and when it's right to do so, we'll be able uh, to welcome people in. One of the first projects of the lab uh, that we're currently working on is funded by Justice Canada uh, and brings together uh, provinces, territories, and the federal government to accelerate the growth and development of restorative justice nationally in conjunction with our criminal justice system. And internationally right now, the lab is collaborating with organizations and leaders to develop a restorative approach to truth, justice, and reconciliation in response to police violence against black people. Yeah, thank you. Um, and as you said already, uh, this is a lab that is not just simply meant for a local impact. It, it, it has a very significant global dimension. And Holly, you are part of that global dimension. And two of you sitting at almost opposite ends of uh, this, this planet uh, doing fantastic work um, and, and, and doing that work together and as part of this whole initiative. Holly, from your perspective, tell us how you see this initiative here in Canada, in Halifax, um, furthering your work and the work of others around the world who are connected with this initiative and how, that, how you view that as advancing the restorative justice uh, around the world. Well, thanks so much, Deep. Look, it's a remarkable opportunity to, to connect um, people, we, uh, one of my favourite elders here in Canberra, Ngunnawal elder, First Nations elder, talks about the, a web of connectedness. And it's that web of connectedness in community which makes a community strong for the children and for the, the, the families to grow. And I see that what this work is doing is creating us a very tight web of connectedness so that we can pull through those strings of humanity that bind us in difficult times at the moment, we need all the strength that we can have from similar uh, thinking um, groups of people with similar approaches to research. And because our work is 
difficult work. We're working in, in spaces where there are inequalities, we're working in spaces of vulnerability. We have to do this work for the long haul. We can't do just rapid fixes. We have to work our way through to, to form those just relationships that Jennifer mentioned earlier. And so this international co collaboration will bring together all of our different groups that are growing and expanding and give it a nice solid framework um, of a reliable relationship where we can all practice our humanity in, uh, with strength. So thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, so well put, Holly. Uh, now there is, you know, we have, the time is limited. We could talk about this subject for hours. Um, and I am sure that those who are watching this, uh, this recording, they would be, uh, uh, they would have many questions in their mind. They would want to know more about this. If they do want to know more about it, uh, where should they go? How can they find out more about this? Uh, Jennifer, let me ask you that question first. Sure. Uh, one of the places they could go, Nova Scotia just recently held its first restorative public inquiry uh, into the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children that just finished its work. And its report really provides a sense of the different way of working that's represented uh, by a restorative approach. And, and significantly for this time, the potential and importance of a restorative approach to address systemic racism. Uh, so it can be found on the web at www.restorativeinquiry with an I. Uh, .ca. There's also a range of really uh, great conferences happening right now virtually. This is one of the one of the advantages of the of the current uh, path we're following in life. And uh, one upcoming in November is Canada's National Restorative Justice Symposium uh, that'll be accessible. Uh, around the world and, and certainly across Canada uh, with many presenters uh, talking about the work they're doing in restorative justice in their community. And, and you know, one of the ways people can learn more is to seek out those in their own communities uh, around the world, here in Halifax, there in Canberra, uh, and all the spaces and places in between where people are, are uh, working restoratively. And of course, I hope um, they'll connect with the lab. Yeah, and, and Holly, um you know, if you're in Australia and, and watching this, uh, are there any additional resources that uh, they could go to and, and, you know, how could, can they find out more about this in Australia? Absolutely, Deep. Uh, within Canberra, we're actually moving to become a restorative city here in the ICT, <laughs> so Australian Capital Territory, for, that, for those of you who aren't familiar. We have a website which is about our restorative community we are looking at the use of restorative practice and restorative justice in our education, in health, in the justice system, in every level of our governance to, to have a, a fairer and um, more socially balanced um, society. So that, I'm sure that we can arrange to have that website posted up as well. And I think we're all happy for any, any questions at any time. We'll connect you with the, the international um, restorative community who are very, very passionate and very committed to, to building on this work. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Holly, and, and thank you, Jennifer. Thank you both for joining me today, and congratulations to both of you on this fantastic initiative. Thanks to the Sobe family that has made this possible, and uh, kudos to both of you uh, that for the fantastic work you're doing in, in addressing some of these fundamentally important problems in our societies, particularly at this moment in our, in our history. Um, and I, put, I must say that I feel that I have kind of a sense of um, poetic coincidence here that uh, you two represent the two universities where I just coincidentally happen to have been president of both of those. And, and so this is a very special moment for me as well. Um, and, and again, I wish you all the best in your endeavors and look forward to talking to you again as this initiative progresses. Thank you so much.